Allow me to just get straight to the point, okay? So Andrew Tate is completely wrong on Islam and Christianity. It'd be great if he was watching this video, this is totally relevant to what we're seeing in Britain and the West and everything, okay? And his influence on the youth. So one of the things you say is that Christianity is weak, Islam is strong. You say that Christianity is falling and Islam is growing faster than any other religion. Therefore, it must be true, but that is totally wrong. First of all, that is simply rhetoric. That is not an argument for what is true and what is not true. If that is what your general principle is, well then a thousand years ago, or 1,500 to 2,000 years ago, you would have said that Christianity was the true religion. So if it can change varying on what time period you're living in, well then it can't be an argument for the truth. But you're, and you also have to ask, why is Christianity being attacked? Why is Christianity falling? Well, because Satan's actually threatened by it. Satan doesn't like the true religion. He likes false religions. That is why in exact coordination we're seeing both the growth, the rapid growth of the radical far left, the Satanists, and Islam. They're both forces of evil. They go exactly hand in hand. He wants us worshipping false idols. Yes, Islam and leftism contradict each other completely, but what they have in similar is they are both roots to eternal life in hell. There's a reason that in these dark, evil times we worship all sorts of evil, that Islam's on the rise, because Islam is the evil, it is the false religion, leading us astray from the true one and only God. And also, I want to also debunk this argument. Islam is not strong and Christianity is not weak. This is a West versus East issue. Christians in Romania are stronger than Muslims in Britain. Christians in Romania, because you live in Romania so you'll know this, Christians in Romania actually follow the religion. Muslims in Britain don't follow the religion. Muslims in Britain commit disproportionate amounts of crime, whether it's rape, sexual assault on children, bestiality, murder, domestic abuse, assault, tax evasion, all of these things. They commit these crimes. They'll do anything except eat pork. Would you call that a strong Muslim? So no, this is not a Christianity or Islam issue. And as an actual religion, Christianity is stronger because Islam requires, as a religion, it requires leaders to threaten people with decapitation, uh, thrown off buildings, stonings, other forms of execution. In order to keep people in the religion, they have to threaten them with torture and death. In order to keep people following the religion, they have to do these evil, inhumane things. Islam relies on fear because it does not have the powers of God supporting it. There is no godliness, there is no magic in Islam. So it has to be humans, it has to be people. To me that sounds more like an insecure religion. And insecurity is weakness. And then the other and then the other argument you make is the power vacuum. People have left Christianity. Christianity has gotten weak, so people have moved to Islam. But that's not true. Nobody's converting to Islam. That's not happening. Society as a whole, and I'm not talking about immigrants, I'm talking about the ethnic the ethnic people, for example, the ethnic people of Britain. We're turning more leftist and liberal. We're not in we're not converting to Islam. That's not happening. Islam has one of the worst conversion rates in the entire world. And not only that, Muslim converts within a couple of years revert back to Christianity or atheism. It has one of the worst reversion rates. New converts leave the religion almost immediately. The power vacuum has allowed for Satanism, leftism. The power vacuum has not had people in the country moving to Islam. It's simply not happening. So why is Islam growing in the West? Because it's not weak Christians, as we've said. No, of course, what it is, is corrupt politicians who have opened up the borders for anyone to come into the country. Immigration is strictly a political issue. Christians can't simply just, you know, get the train down to Dover and start with a bow and arrow and start shooting down the boats. It cannot be done. There is this thing called laws that are stopping us from doing that. We cannot do that. We'd be put in jail. This is strictly a political issue. This is not a societal issue. It is a political issue. The government are in full control of it and the government are failing us. So if there's no political solution and we can't take matters into our own hands, well then it simply is out of our control. And then the only reason that Islam, not just by country, but is growing in numbers worldwide, so fair argument, it's not just growing in individual countries, actually it is a worldwide growing religion, true. But that's again, not because people are converting to Islam, that's just because they're having more children. So you could say that's one of the good things they're doing. However, it is not an argument for why Islam is the true religion. It is not some argument that people are converting, they're simply having more kids. They're having more kids than everyone else. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't make it true. It doesn't mean anything. So I've debunked the weak Christians and strong Muslims argument, and I've also debunked the power vacuum argument.
So what you should be doing is instead of looking at your self-interest, because, well, look, us as humans are corrupt. We're self-serving. Now, what you've probably done is thought, well, I want multiple wives. A lot of my fan base, so a lot of your fan base were young Muslims in the West because they sort of agreed with your takes, for example, on relationships. And you're much more money, money-centered. So you thought, well, to become Muslim means you have an even stronger cult following. Now, this isn't what religion is about. Of course, everyone does this. If someone is really into meditation and yoga, perhaps though, if they're in search of religion, go and hop over to Buddhism. Everyone just chooses what sort of serves them. But look, as strong masculine men, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be having a little bit of humility. It should not be some venture and search in the hopes of finding the religion that suits you most. It should be the search and seeking towards truth. So if we're going to be strong men who put our feelings aside for once, well, most men who do that end up coming to Christianity. Masculine men come to Christianity. Men who simply want to fulfill their own selfish desires and evil, corrupted desires that Satan pushes onto us, well, they seem to always go to Islam. Now, I saw your video with uh, Katie Hopkins. It sounded like you were going to come back to Britain. So if you do realise that Islam is a false religion pushed by Satan, think about it. Satanists whose number one goal is to destroy the West, push mass immigration of Muslims. What does that say about Islam? It says it's destructive. It says it's a false religion. If Satanists want us to go to hell, if Satan wants us to go to hell and he's pushing Islam, what does that say about Islam? Doesn't it say it's a false religion? Well, it does. And one of the things you have is a voice and influence over the youth. You have a strong voice. You have a strong voice. Revolutionary capabilities make people actually take action and change something for once. And look, this isn't me saying this from some negative view. I believe the whole human trafficking case is total nonsense. I don't believe any of this misogyny stuff. I've watched the Take Confidentials, the emergency meetings. So I'm saying this from a genuine thing of how do we fix the West? But how do we fix the West? And I've come to the sort of the conclusion that Christ is the only way to save the West. There's no other way. Every other religion is false. Satanists push other religions. That says a lot. Come to Christ and long live Great Britain.